All right. right. So I'm currently on the phone with DSP. He's another musician that reached out about the interview series. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hello, I'm DSP from Florida. I am a glam rock and roll artist. I sing lead vocals and I play lead guitar. I'm currently in the works of putting out a brand new video at the end of the month. And I just want to say hello. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, so with these interviews, I always kind of like to, you know, find out, you know, where did it begin for you? Uh, when did you first, you know, identify and connect with music? What about it kind of spoke to you and made you want to pursue it? Well, I grew up uh, basically in the 1970s. And uh, back then there was pretty much a big explosion of rock music of of course kiss kiss was the most dynamite uh, explosion i came across on television records my neighbor pulled out all his vinyl records as a bass player just rocking the kiss and i solid connect with that uh you know basically as a young child and that pretty much told me this is what i'm gonna do it didn't happen at that time but i would say probably good eight years down the road that's when it happened Okay. And so when you first kind of made that connection, did you start uh, looking at, you know, instruments that you wanted to play or did you just want to get in front of the stage and start singing? What was kind of your initial steps into, you know, learning music? Um, basically, the energy that the record covers put off with the image of the face that Kiss put out with the makeup, that pretty much showed me excitement it showed me something that i related to a hundred percent with image it related to me with energy and it related to me with speaking to the world which is basically what they've done throughout their whole career uh, it really energized me to uh, kick start a rock and roll career which happened when i was basically about 13 years old okay and so uh did you start writing like lyrics grab yourself a you know a pen and notepad and start you know going down that path or did you start learning any instruments or anything yeah my first instrument was a clarinet and uh, my mom rented it for me and i played it and i just knew that it was a love and a gift to have a instrument in my hands and in my presence and my personality connected with it 100 percent too and it was also a time where i was living in oregon and um my neighbor heard me blowing on the clarinet and she would tease me so that was later down the road too that you would see teasing and rock and roll music so i got my first taste of ha, ha, you'll never amount to nothing you know on this instrument because it blew like a horn it sounded like a big barrel you know <laughs> sure sure and so uh eventually did you decide that there was not place for in rock music for a clarinet and then move to a guitar or... exactly okay um did you move on to a guitar or was it a different instrument guitar blazing six string electric guitar when i found the love for that i got a silver tone from my grandfather i plugged that in i knew i was born right into rock and roll it was amazing it's like a feeling of just you know and i knew you know just like a lot of musicians that when they pick up and they know they know what they have and i pretty much knew that at that time that i was going to excel in in the you know rock music you know on a level of just let's get it on and go and that's pretty much how it took off for me to start okay and so were you completely self-taught or did you do any private lessons uh you mentioned clarinet uh did you do anything like within the traditional school curriculum well when i was a bit young too i had a mickey mouse drum set so that kind of did some too but also that taught me some rhythmic aspects and then when i got on the guitar at 13 i took guitar lessons for about nine months at a local uh, guitar uh, retailer who basically lined me up with a connection of two to three different guitar instructors. And I would take, I started with one guitar instructor who was basically talented, flawless talent, but really I knew that he wasn't the right one. And I could listen next door to another room where another guitarist was cranking, blistering Randy Rue road solos from Ozzy Osbourne. I said, that's my guitar instructor. So I went right over there, knocked on the door and I said, can I take from you? No offense to the other, but I would rather take from this other guitar instructor. That taught me all my blistering solo tactics to get me going. Sure. Excellent. And so um, you kind of sound like you kind of knew the trajectory that you want to go in creatively. Um, how, how did you kind of go about, um, making it unique and owning uh you know what the what you kind of wanted to emulate i don't i don't want to say uh copy or anything like that but you definitely uh seem like you have a style that you're going for 
Yeah, that pretty much blew me into glam rock because at that time, glam rock was blossoming with, you know, Motley Crue coming out after the uh, Ozzy Osbourne situation. Because I think they believe they toured together at the time at that particular element. And I saw theatrics. That started with my makeup. That started with my vision of, OK, let's go rock star, which pretty much got me to the age of 18. And I put together a band with a friend of mine that I went to high school with. And we pretty much came onto the Florida scene in our teenage life and we just played rock and roll music so that pretty much blossomed into a vision of okay i am doing this for life now okay and then how many kind of iterations of a band do you think that you've been through uh has it always been you know the dsp project or did you you know go through different bands on on that journey well, basically, at that time, I had no idea that I was going to become a solo artist, which who I am today is DSP. This is like 1985, 86-ish. And, you know, I formed a band with a very good friend called Cry Tough, and we pretty much became a big full-on glam band, which um, that pretty much put together the prospect of I found my home and I'm going to rock with this glam band. We all were very heavy image conscious. Poison was big. Motley was big at that time. Cinderella, you had so many good bands that were just exploding from the mid 80s. And um, we pretty much drove a hard, hard um, copy of a flawless look, but not really playing out so much till we went to California. And I have a friend that I met out there who I'm still friends today named Kyle, and he plays drums. We met up with him, and then that's when we started hitting the scene big time in California, playing the club scene. Excellent. And so you mentioned uh, that you did yeah. go through a few different iterations before you kind of realized that, you know, being a solo band might be the trajectory for you. When did you reach that point? What was kind of the moment where you decided, okay, it's time for me to kind of promote myself as a musician? It was basically after spending three years in California, I became very... Um, um, aware of the fact that the the music scene when Nirvana came out and I know the story has been around a long time where the scene changed to grunge I kind of knew that Los Angeles was going to not be the scene anymore or unless I wanted to go to school which I almost attended a uh, musicians institute but I told myself David let's just do something so I'm originally from Florida I moved to California let's go back to Florida which sounds kind of silly now. I went into dance music because, you know, Backstreet Boys was exploding. You had sync, you know, Britney Spears, all those pop. I started doing pop dance music and I became out as Dave Perry. And then that was the solo artist. Not even knowing that it was going to go back back in to heavy metal and rock and roll, though, probably 10 years after that. Sure. So uh, that's a perfect segue to to lead back to that. What what eventually changed there from uh, doing the dance music and things like that to eventually, you know, going back to your roots? I discovered a love once again for heavy metal rock music because I was putting guitar, heavy metal guitar into dance music, which kind of was strange, too really doing guitar solos over their music, you know, maybe Prince, Prince from the 80s did a lot of it. But I really noticed that it's because it was dance music. And um, I pretty much started an interest of female fronted bands. I would go see female. And so I basically started working with a female vocalist and we put together this project called Striga and pretty much shopped a four song demo and landed a record deal in England that really never amounted to nothing either, which is kind of sad and strange. But we almost signed a record deal in England. And we pretty much did a really good project together. And it was kind of glam, kind of punk, kind of gothic. And that's when I knew that I was right back into heavy metal and rock. Excellent. I, I could definitely see how that would kind of be a, a natural progression for that. So that kind of leads us up to, you know, where we are now. Uh, what is your, you know, current project? Obviously, it's most likely still DSP. But what is, what is, you know, the type of material that you're putting out now? And are you working with any other musicians or bands? Well, basically, after that that time with Striga, I pretty much said, okay, I learned to record, you know, uh, computers and pretty much doing my own thing. So I said, let's take on my own thing now. And then... And that's when DSP blossomed because I went by the name DSP with Striga. And then I said, let's just full on take a lead vocalist approach because I love singing. I've been singing all my life and I always dreamed and envisioned of becoming a fronted lead vocalist frontman for a rock and roll band. I don't have a band, so let's just be DSP. I started uh, composing my own original music. And then when I turned 50 years old, I wrote a song called 50. And that pretty much re-kicked and just kick-started my whole rock and roll passion again for for the early 70s and 80s glam rock music. 
and I've been structuring all original songs for about three to four years now. Um, I signed a record contract in Germany, and I put out a compilation record with uh, Paul Deano was on the record from Iron Maiden, the original vocalist from Iron Maiden. I think a girl from Girls School. There's a Ryan Roxy from Alice Cooper. I was included on a, uh, you know, a, a big compilation record was a big accomplishment for me, in my opinion, which was great to feel good about it, my time frame and my age. So that's when I knew that it was pretty much rock and roll for life. Yeah, that's huge. Congratulations. Um, so has Thank it you. has been has that been kind of your sole focus then? You haven't really uh, been uh, playing for any other bands. It's just, you know, the DSP stuff. You mentioned that you do have a record contract. So I assume there's some, some sort of exclusivity there. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a one song, basically a license deal. I should pretty much click on record contract, but yes, I did. And I self published a book too, in that time frame. So that kind of helped do a lot of stuff all at one time at that time frame. So yeah, and basically, as far as bands go, I've been trying to gather musicians possibly to play with me at times, which kind of gets a little hard. And, you know, because as a musicians, we all love one another, but the direction of a solo artist can be very frustrating for other musicians because, of course, it's your own music that you're trying to generate with them. And basically, I just go to drum loops now and I play my own bass and buddy vocals and lead guitar. And that's how I record. And I pretty much work on the Internet for now, but I'm looking to go live again at some point it's my love and my passion to be on a stage of course sure uh that was actually going to be one of my next questions of uh when you do play live do you get like session musicians or like hired guns or whatever basically i've tried to work with volunteer musicians which um really doesn't work out it kind of changes my whole sound because you know that kind of goes in a direction of okay we want to do things this way it turns into a band again which there's nothing wrong with a band is a good thing if i can find a home of a band i would do it and still be dsp as a lead vocalist um but basically i love the the vision of what i've created a budget would be a really good friend of band you know if i could just get the hired gun situation but also a home if i could find some solid players that would want to dominate and work with me would be great too sure but after that on this interview too, to tell them please come in you know if you're willing to help me <laughs> well that's part of why i do these <laughs> interviews is to try to you know grow that uh musician network so you know people that might want to hear it can reach out to you and yeah. be like, hey i'll do that um, all right. Well, so what are a couple of your favorite memories that have happened to you in the amount of time that you've been working in the music industry? California is a big memory. I mean, just to be a part of that emotion of just, you know, I played Gazaris in Los Angeles and, and you know, there's so many musicians that walk and just to get on that stage and feel the power without even doing anything. I stood like for a few minutes and looked at the ground and then looked around and said, you know, how many musicians have about flawlessly died, you know, and that's a big memory. And then coming back to Florida and then just visioning everything all over again, that's a big memory of a trip, you know, and the memories of all, just everything I spoke to you about is just unbelievable that I'm still alive and playing rock and roll music today. And and then recently I've taken some a trip up to Nashville and Nashville's just booming and, and, and I've struck an interest in relocating there possibly in the future. And it's just I'm talking to musicians up there now, and it's just so good to see that the spirit of rock and roll is everywhere up there and not just rock and roll, but all kinds of music. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially these past couple of years, it's been, you know, really inspiring to see just how many different types of music are hitting the road and getting out there. Yes. And it's not so much about look and not so much about you know, you know, presence a hundred percent, you know, it's all about talent, you know, and I'm loving that part too. You know, I still love my glam conscious image. Don't get me wrong, but you know, just a solid drummer is what's incredible, you know, or it's like bass, you know, we used to walk into auditions when I was younger and you got hair, you're hired. They didn't even listen to me play, you know, and it's like, <laughs> sure. come on, you know, I want musicianship too. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, where can people uh, find your social media and listen to your stuff and, you know, contact you if they want to play for you? Yeah, basically you can go to YouTube. I'm on YouTube. I have, that's my real functioning uh, channel and it, they can just type in DSP and I put out a video when I turned 50 years old with the if you type in dsp number five number zero you'll bring up the video that i did when i was 50 years old and i pretty much produced i directed it and um, they can find me that way you can also find me on facebook as david perry dsp um 
if you'd like to con- contact me that way too, and I can give out an email too, if they're interested in that, if you'd like. Uh, sure. Otherwise I can uh, make sure it's linked in the description and everything as well. Yeah. I can also uh, type it to you or do you just want me to say it over the phone or. Uh, you can just send it to me. I'll make sure it's linked. Uh, e- emails can be a little kind of cumbersome to get through, uh, but I will definitely make sure that it gets included in the description and everything. Um, okay. Okay. So, okay. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I always like to give the person I'm interviewing the opportunity to put out, you know, their final message. So what's something in your words uh, that you would like to kind of put out there? I would like to just say thank you to the world for allowing rock music to keep going. Um, you know, I'm just a little tiny pea of it, a little fraction. You know, I, I mean, I was born in, in the late 60s and, you know, before my time, rock and roll was thriving. And it, it, I just would like to put out in the world, thank you. and, and you know, for allowing, you know, all of us as rockers and and myself to be a part of something that we can contribute to you um, as the rock fan is what our act is basically what we're after. You know, I love to perform. I love to share. I love to create and I love to speak. To just show people vision, I love to show people happy. I love to show people party. Let's have a good time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. 